everybody, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 127. Aaron, we've been transported from one garage to another. Whoa. Where are we? Look at this. This is insane. <laughs> this is incredible. This now, is pretty sweet. unfortunately, this will not be our, uh, our our stomping grounds going forward where this is just a temporary thing. But, I mean, man, what what an incredible... But you want to tell them yeah. about this here? Yeah, this is uh, one of my neighbors. His name's Bill, and he lives on my street. And he was gracious enough to host us here on this now, I guess, a set yeah. for tonight. Uh, and he gets to live in this every day. So, lucky him. Absolutely. Okay, so on this episode, we're going to be talking about some of the additions and subtractions that the Sarks went through. Of course, we need to touch on the whole Evander Kane situation. Not a whole lot new developing there, but we haven't really had our thoughts uh, to you guys. I know you guys are interested in that, so uh, those are kind of the first couple topics. Yep, we'll talk about the defense of the Sharks and if they're still going to be effective or not, even though they're the highest paid defenseman in the league. Uh, the fourth line, which I think is a big big point for uh, Bob Bugner, and, and we'll get to why. Uh, are they a playoff team? And some other things at the end. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. All right, nothing funny here. I just want to give everybody the opportunity to kind of just take this in. Just look at this. It's just, we got the toaster here too. Awkward silence. <laughs> Aaron, so let's talk about some of the additions and subtractions to this team so far. Uh, last season, of course, getting rid of uh, Patrick Marlowe, at least so far they haven't uh, brought him back <laughs> on. Four games in last season, right. they brought him in, but so far, no Marlowe settings. Uh, that was two seasons ago. I'm sorry, two seasons ago, yeah. my bad. Uh, Donato mm -hmm. uh, was another guy that is uh, gone. Sorensen decided he wanted to go back and play for fun. I can respect that. Decided or decided for him? Probably decided for him. Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> and then, of course, another decided for you, uh, Martin Jones. Martin Jones gets the buyout, uh, goes to Philadelphia. Yeah. Did they sign him for $2 million? $2 million, two years, I think. Yeah. Is it one or two? I think it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, not so hot. Uh, real quick with Martin Jones, the uh, first preseason game we saw of him, he had, I think, three goals on him. What was it, 11 shots? <laughs> par, uh, par for the course. In the first period. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, not, not really... The place for Martin Jones to kind of revive the career, uh, it would seem. Hey, it's early. It's Who knows? It's preseason. It is preseason. So uh, he's up against guys that are not NHL caliber. He's in full Martin Jones preseason form. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, uh, and then the backup, of course, Devin Dubnik yeah. uh, for that situation. So the kind of the subtractions, right? So the additions for this year so far, you want to kind of go over those? Sure. We got uh, Nick Bonino, uh, Cogliano, uh, Aiden Hill, and James Reimer coming back in. So the goal is completely transformed into two different goalies, um, which is, I think, obviously is going to be for the better. It can't be worse, right? Right. But if it is worse, then we know it's not the goalies. <laughs> no, I'm not going down that road again. Uh, but uh, yeah, Bonino and Cogliano, they, they were brought in for... Um, I mean, not just their skill, but their professionalism and what they're going to do to the locker room, which is still kind of a work in progress of getting the the culture change that they want to get. Right. Uh, the Sharks are not a powerhouse anymore. The, the Stanley Cup window is closing if it's not closed already. So this is going to be kind of transition years into the younger guys. And this is exactly what they want to bring in, these guys to bring... Uh, professionalism to the young guys, show them how what you know what they want to what they should be doing to have a long career in the NHL. Right. I mean, uh, Patrick Marlowe is a great example. He's not on the team anymore, uh, so far as far as we know. <laughs> but uh, he is a great guy because he is now 42, 43 years old. Uh, same with Joe Thornton, and they are still playing. And it takes a lot to do that. Believe me, I am thirty nine, and my knees are killing me today, <laughs> just in general. And I don't even play professional hockey. So I don't know how these guys are doing it, uh, getting out of bed and not just playing, yeah. but playing 82 full games. Patrick Marlowe does not miss games. It's, it's amazing what he does. So young guys will see that and they'll say, okay, I want to know what this guy's doing so that I can keep going yeah. as long as I can because you want to you stay in the game as long as you can. So anyway, that's what these guys are brought on for. Um, I think that also solidifies it's, he was brought on for the third the third line center to yes. take away a lot of the defensive responsibilities from Tomas Hurdle and Logan Couture. So they are going to be fresher legs. Uh, they'll be doing less penalty killing. So um, overall, this should help out the team. The team now has three strong centers, yeah. which they have not had since Pavelski's gone, basically. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, yeah, they're great additions. I think 
addition by subtraction in some cases and then bringing on some professional guys. And this is kind of what I, I talked about last year. If they could have done this last year, I think the team would have been stronger, obviously. But they didn't go out really spend because they were kind of too close to the cap. They couldn't do exactly what they're doing. Um, the buyout with Martin Jones gave them some space. So this team is headed in the better and more correct direction they're riding the ship. Um, they do still have some space so they can they can make some moves. However, they are at the 50 contracts of 50 contracts. And we talked with uh, Doug Wilson about yeah. this before. They don't like to have 50 of 50. They like to have some wiggle room in case they have to make trades, in case someone like Evander Kane they can't play and you have to kind of bury him. He's still going to be one of those contracts. You want to have some wiggle room in there to do something, and they're not there yet. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of trade or something happen uh, in the coming yeah. weeks, I guess, because it's still another almost two weeks before the Sharks start. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, as you said, with being 50 of 50, they want to have that wiggle room there. So um, as Aaron is saying, we're kind of expecting to see the shoe to, to drop here, right? We're expecting to see some sort of movement happen, um, but preseason's well underway. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they do have now, the, the question was, with the additions and the subtractions, is this team better than it was last season? Frankly, I think yes. As you said, the third line center position was a part uh, of, the, of the team that they really wanted to focus in on, and I think they got the right guy for the job. Mm -hmm. um, so like you said, he's gonna be taking away a lot of those defensive zone starts, a lot of the penalty kill responsibility. responsibility. Cogliano is gonna be doing the same thing defensively. He's uh, short up on that fourth line. Mm -hmm. We'll talk a little bit about the fourth line a little bit later on, but I think he's a, a huge addition to that fourth line for one particular reason. So all in all, and, and again, in goal, I think there's upgrades in goal. I think Aiden Hills looked really good. Now you just saw something, I think it was about, as of five hours ago, he had a bit of a, a wrist injury in the left hand there. Yeah, it was in practice. He took a shot and stuck his glove hand out and I think it just, it was they called it a stinger. So he went to the locker room. I don't think it's anything serious, but he might miss a start just to kind of, I mean, it's preseason. You, yeah. know, you, don't, you know what you got with the goalies at least. They're not gonna be benching Aiden Hill or sending him to right. the minors. So uh, it's more of just to rest him up, make sure he's 100% going into the season so he doesn't have a nagging probably a bone bruise at the worst, yeah. I would say. Uh, probably isn't that, but, and I'm speculating, I'm not saying it sure. was that. Just, that would probably be the worst case scenario, or I guess a broken bone would be worst case scenario, but I don't think it was that serious. So nothing serious, just kind of uh, concerning, I guess, and something to look out for, but he might miss the next start or two. So all in all, again, looking at the roster uh, then and now, I feel like they're in a little bit better uh, place um, than they were last season. So. Fingers crossed, hopefully everything works out for the better and they're pushing for that playoff spot. I know you're not optimistic about it. Of course I am, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Now, in terms of optimism and maybe not so much, we're gonna go ahead and tackle the topic of Evander Kane. Um, I don't know exactly where you wanna start on this because there's a lot to unpack with this name. Well, he had one investigation for gambling and I, th I believe he was cleared for that yes. from the NHL. And immediately after had a, another investigation uh, started because of allegations from his soon-to-be ex-wife, not quite ex-wife yet. Um, these were not criminal charges. They were, I believe, in divorce court um, and thrown out there. I'm not gonna get into the details, partially because this is a family-friendly show. We don't wanna, I don't wanna get into the details, yeah. yeah. But uh, they are of uh, uh, violent and sexual nature, so. Yeah. Uh, if you want to read about it, you can find it online anywhere, if you just Google it. Uh, it's bad. It's a bad look for him and the team. It's very understandable why the team is not having him at training camp. Uh, they're going to let the investigation go through and then figure out what they're going to do with Kane. Right. At this point, he's untradeable. No team is going to take him. His salary is too high for someone who has this much baggage. Um, I don't know if he's going to be playing for the Sharks anymore. Um, I don't think it's very good PR. Granted, he's probably their best player. Yeah. At least he was last season. So going into this season, he's still probably one of their best players. But at this point, if, if any of these allegations are even remotely true, uh, I don't believe he should be playing, at least for the Sharks. Yeah. If another team wants him, that's their problem. Um, I think this is a little bit bigger than NHL in general. I think it's a privilege to be able to play in the NHL. And if you have anything like this, this is a bigger issue than it would be um, in anything else. I mean, even the gambling one, it's, fu it's funny. Like, I, funny is not the right word. It's not funny, but. Um, As I laugh, go ahead. <laughs> these allegations would have a less punishment than the gambling ones, yeah. which I think is ridiculous. So um, that's kind of where I stand. I don't think he should be on the Sharks anymore. Even if they 
If they're absolutely completely 100% false, then maybe we can talk, but I just don't think that's the case. See, and that's where I have the problem is because, and I, like I said, I, I told you before, and I'm gonna use this word probably throughout this whole segment, allegedly. Everything so far that we've heard is allegedly. I mean, even with the gambling, Anna Kane did not want to say anything about anything that had happened after she had said it on Instagram. Right. Right. So when they went to it through the whole investigation, she offered no help whatsoever to, to figure out if this was true or not. She had just thrown these allegations out there again. Allegedly, he did this. They went through the investigation, found nothing. Now, these other things are coming out to light. Allegedly. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, and again, I know what you're what you're saying. This is, I, what, you know, but for me, it's it, unless he's it's proven one way or the other. I, I can't say that, you know, it's. It's fair to throw him under the bus. What if I said something about you, right? And none of it was true. Just because I say something that was horrible doesn't make you the bad guy necessarily. It mean, you have to have done those things, right? So I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of torn where I can feel for the guy if none of this is true, but at the same time, my goodness, um, if, if there's any truth at all to any of this, yeah, it's absolutely a horrible look, not only for Evander Kane, but for the team and for the NHL. Yeah, and he does have a history. Yeah. He has burned bridges in every team he's been on. Uh, he started in Atlanta, that moved to Winnipeg, and then he had an incident where he had his he wore a track suit to a game instead of a suit, and it got thrown <laughs> into the showers by... Bufflin. Cap- it was Bufflin. Yeah. Um, then he went to Buffalo, and he wore out his welcome in Buffalo. Right. And they traded him to San Jose, and I remember both fans of Winnipeg and Buffalo uh, laughing at the Sharks for trading for him. Mm-hmm. Um, so he has a history of, I mean, it's a different kind of history. That's it's it right different, there. But he's got a lot of baggage. I, I, and I understand, but his, his history, again, for me, his history isn't of, of this nature, right? This is not history. This that is we new. know of. Sure. It doesn't mean it wasn't there in the past. It, it doesn't, but we, we, there were no allegations of anything like this before. He had a gambling problem, of which we, we know about now as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wore a tracksuit, right? I mean, if that, maybe it's a fashion let's put, crime. Let's I don't put it know, this way: Do you want him playing for the Sharks? If he's completely cleared of everything else, I, I can't find it within me to say, you know, if he's innocent, that he shouldn't be allowed to play. Do you think he could come back in that locker room and have everyone have his back I, again? If he's if he's seen as innocent and his teammates see him that that way, then yeah, I would. I guess it would. I just I can't imagine know? the locker room being able to do that yeah i don't I, know i mean imagine all the wives of those yeah, players yeah you know if they knew something or or anything if any of that was true so <laughs> it's it's a touchy subject it's a strange subject uh it's certainly not one that i'm all too happy to try to tackle here but um how about you tell us in the comments would you want kane on your t- <laughs> on, on the sharks or not Regardless of whether and, or not, and keep it civil. Uh, <laughs> Try to keep that. it civil. Yeah. yeah, good luck with that. There is a filter on there, so if yes. there's any swearing or anything, it will not get picked yeah. up. <laughs> Be sure not to use swear words, yeah. people. We're a family friendly yes. show. Okay. So, um, all in all, okay, let's say that the Sharks are not able to use Evander Kane or he's not welcome back. Uh, whatever the case may be with the Vander Kane. Well, so, it's, it's easy to see because he's not in training camp. So we're seeing how the lines the lines are yeah. lining up, if you will. Absolutely. <laughs> so if that's the case, what? how do they replace that production, if at all possible? You've got guys like Timo Meyer and Kevin LeBanc, who are now considered veterans on this team, mm-hmm. who have underperformed for the last couple of seasons. They need to step up. If, that, if they're going to replace those numbers, it's those two guys that need to step up and get that production up and going. Is it going to be them? Is it going to be a rookie who comes up, like Eklund, for instance, right? Dolan. Are these guys going to just kind of come out of nowhere with some big points? Um, is it going to be by committee? Is everyone on the team going to get another couple points here and there and replace all of those points? How do you see this shaking out? He's not replaceable. You're not going to be able to replace a guy one for one. He's just he's a special player. Um, that he's a very good player, and you just you're not going to be able to to pluck somebody that no other team knew about as a free agent and plug him in yeah. there. It's just not going to work. So um, to me, it's just his ice time is going to be gobbled up by other people. Um, I want to temper expectations for Dolan. I love him, but <laughs> I you can't. Uh, for one, it's a, it's a grueling 82 game season. A lot yes. of these guys, especially when they've never played in the NHL, uh, find out the hard way. Like, oh, you get on a good streak for five, ten games, and then all of a sudden they tail off and they're gone for the next 20. Yeah, because it's a grind. Yeah. Um, so I think um, 
I could see Eklund making the team now. If Kane is not coming back for sure, I could see Eklund coming only because there's a, a um, I don't know what you call it, but a nine game tryout kind of thing is what they call it in a way. Before the ELC kicks in. Right, yeah. so their entry level contract doesn't kick in until after their ninth game. So if they play 10 games in the NHL, his, his very first season of his contract that he signs a three year contract starts. If he doesn't, a lot of teams will do this for the rookies. They'll let him play up to nine games and they send him back either to, uh, in his case, he'll be going back to Sweden because uh, he's not in juniors. Your, uh, your garden, I think, is how it's yeah. pronounced. Uh, but he can. He's eligible to play in the AHL, I believe. Um, I, I, no, I think first-round picks are allowed to play in the NHL out of their contract in Sweden. Um, but they can't go to the AHL. They have to go back to their Sweden team. Only first-round picks. If they're a second to sixth, they have to stay in Sweden. Okay. They can't go to juniors or AHL or anything else. Double check them on that, boys. Put it in the comments. Okay. Very good. Okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, do you think Eklund might be making the team then? If he makes the team, I don't know if he'd make it past the nine games. Okay. I, I, I think it'd be great for him to get those nine games in for sure to kind of get a sense of this is where I am at this point in my career. This is what I will need to work on. Mm-hmm. And he can work with that for the year and then come back next year and make the team. I want to tie in something that you said earlier about 50 contracts. You say in Evander Kane, maybe not going to be playing with the Sharks here, mm-hmm. right? Um, are you? Do you think that basically that means that they're going to cancel the contract? That would take both parties to do. Right. Do you think Evander Kane would cancel his contract? I do not think so. That means he won't get paid. Right. And he's in the middle of a bankruptcy hearing. Absolutely. So no, I don't think so. So we're stuck with fifty contracts currently. Unless something came up with yeah. the league in a in an investigation, and then they would be able to negate the contract, similar to uh, Slava Voinov in L.A. five six right. years ago. However, everything that's going on now is in divorce court, right? So correct. They're not criminal charges. Exactly. So it depends on how the league is going to handle it. So Sharks fans, basically, it seems like we're going to be stuck with this contract, whether he plays for us or not. Right. Correct. Unless the league says. It can be negated at that point. Then it can be negated, and then sure. it's gone. And then the the cap hit's gone as well, which mm-hmm. would open up a lot for the sharks. If that were the case, you could then make your trade, get rid of a contract here or there, maybe an extra contract, pull someone in who's uh, a seven million dollar player. I, I put this out months ago about sending Vlasic to Montreal. Yes, because Montreal loves French Canadian. Loves Vlasic. Let's just say. Well, it. they love they love Vlasic his whole career. <laughs> uh, Shea Weber is out. Like, I don't know if he's going to come back. He might be done with hockey, but they're stuck with his contract. Um, I could see them, and they need a defenseman. Yeah. So they, I could see them swapping us Shea Weber for taking off a bad contract or giving us kind of a bad contract or a player that won't play and taking on Vlasic, who's considered a bad contract. We can keep half that salary. Now, is that a bad contract? If, was he $7 million a year? What if yeah. he's $3.5 million? Would you take Vlasic on your team for three and a half million? Uh, would I take him? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Like if, if I'm we, Montreal, if you're if you're Montreal and yeah. you take half, and we can, you can retain up to fifty percent of the salary, that's a pretty decent ad- addition of a of a defensive defenseman there. Um, anyway, I just threw it out there, but I could see that happening. That opens up more cap spaces, and we yeah. can put him on long term IR. Um, I could see that as a win win. But yes, I could see more things opening up, uh, kind of similar to what Arizona does in getting taking on bad contracts for picks, mm-hmm. and that's it. Like, yeah. oh, give me your worst player and a pick for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a trade where nothing went back the other way, <laughs> and they did it three times, I think, in this offseason. It's incredible. <laughs> um, I feel like that's the kind of tank job that the Sharks fans, some Sharks fans, want to see. Oh, yeah. The Sharks will never do that. They no. just can't. They can't sustain that. They wouldn't be able to sell tickets. It would just be... Who wants to be Arizona? Yeah, we, Who wants to be the Coyotes? We've heard uh, John Becker uh, right. say specifically, we don't want to do that because it's going to be hard enough to try to sell tickets to, to the fans. I can't make that case to the fans to have them want to come into this building if we're going to say we're going to tank for three years. So obviously, yes, very much a business side of this. Uh, I mean, it's a sport for us, but for the people that are you know at the top of the, uh, the ladder there, it is a business and yep. they're thinking that way. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I don't think we're seeing any tank jobs coming up anytime soon. Now, you had brought up Mark Edward Vlasic. Uh, this is a perfect segue to our next topic here, defense 
in general. I don't know if you want to skip straight to Vlasic, but what I want to talk about first was Burns and Carlson. Are they still effective defenders? Are they still effective on the blue line offensively? I'm going to give you my thoughts on Carlson at least right away. Yes, absolutely. Looking at him in the preseason, and if you take a look at Sheng Peng's article, San Jose Hockey Now, you get a chance to check it out. Please do so. Uh, he has all kinds of good stuff that he writes. But uh, he had had some micro stats, and one of them was zone entries by Eric Carlson. And he's like top of the league. He's one of the absolute best. And you know, going to the preseason game most recently and being able to watch or at least listen to ESPN Plus, uh, at least being <laughs> able to listen to uh, some of the games, uh, the preseason games so far, you see him uh, crossing that line quite a bit. He's got that big wide stance. He protects the puck so well, and he brings the puck across the blue line every time. So uh, that's, again, something that doesn't show up on the main stats, but it's something that with the, the eyeball test that you see a lot from Eric Carlson, and it makes him so valuable to the team. Those zone entries, uh, that's what helps your team get set up in the zone mm -hmm. and, and get those offensive opportunities. He may not get the assist. He may not actually, nothing may come of it, but at least he's got you across the line, uh, rearing and ready to go. So that's my take on Carlson. I still like him. I know a lot of you don't. I think a lot of you don't like him just because of the price tag. If you take the <laughs> price tag off, he's still a phenomenal player. So if you want to go ahead and kind of jump on that or talk about sure. Burns, go ahead. Yeah, I still think Carlson is effective as well. Um, I like what he can do with the puck when he brings it in. It's off the puck I think a lot of people have problems with yeah. because he's not what they expect a defenseman to be. Um, but I, I agree. I think there's a lot of stuff that he does that you don't quite, it doesn't show up on a score sheet. And I feel like a lot of times in the last two seasons when the Sharks have been terrible, Carlson's been looking pretty good. Not every night, but a lot of times he looks great, makes the play, makes the pass, and the guy he passes to can't finish. Yeah. And that takes that assist away. I mean, he probably lost at least a half a dozen points just on pure assists that would have happened on tapping goals that people just missed. Yeah, and, and actually during that preseason game that I got to go to, I, I noticed that as well. A couple passes that just, we've used this term before, mm -hmm. exploded off the stick uh, just because you know some of these guys that are younger yep. that are getting their opportunity in the preseason uh, are not used to handling mm -hmm. uh, those types of passes. It's not even just that he passes so hard and he's just so strong, oh my goodness. It's that you're not expecting the pass to come sometimes right, yeah. like he, he'll throw it to you when you're not expecting it and all of a sudden it's there um so you know it's just it's one of those things where you get that chemistry as you continue to play with each other and uh you know you'll start receiving that pass it's and like, you'll start getting more points right it's like when joe thornton first came to the team he was just like keep your stick on the ice yeah and be ready i'll get it i'll get it to you <laughs> that's carlson's kind of the same way Burnsy now what do you think about Burnsy? i think he's still a very effective defenseman i think uh i think he's him and Hurdle are going to be trade bait if the Sharks are not in a position to make playoffs come the trade deadline. Yeah. I think Burns is still uh, very much a uh, marketable person, uh, player, even with that contract. I yeah. think he, 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 he Nick, or uh, sorry, Ryan Merkley basically shadows him because they want him to see this is how you take care of your body mm -hmm. because he's now 36, I believe, and he is still... I would say pretty close to an elite defenseman, especially offensively. I mean, do you remember that goal he scored? Like yeah. Almost goal of the year. Minnesota. The in dipsy doodle, yep. a couple of inside outs, and just unreal. A guy, first of all, forget the Huge. age. Forget the age. The size of this yep. man, and he skates like he's five foot two, and he just, <laughs> just sliced and diced the entire team. Um, that's just, it's unreal what he can do. And I think. Um, I think they're going to kind of tailor the offense that they were talking about changing the power play. Yes. Up. So I think we're going to see not quite the Burnsy of old because the whole strategy of Burnsy was to get the pucks to the net and have Pavelski, Pavelski tip, tip it. it in or rebound or whatever. Okay. Um, so that strategy changed. He lost a lot of shots and goal because that they changed what they were doing with him. So that kind of that's where I think the effectiveness of him was almost taken away from him. I don't think he lost it. I think it's just a different strategy and a different different way of playing. So Got to find what works again now. Exactly, and I think he's still very effective and will still be a very good player. And speaking of very effective, Mario Ferraro for me, again, still, for my money, the best on the team in mm -hmm. terms of um, his jam, his hustle. The guy's got an engine and it just doesn't turn off. Um, every single time there's a loose puck, if he's in the vicinity, he's either going and getting it or he's battling like hell to get it. 
Um, I've never seen him be, uh, lazy on the puck before. That is one thing you can say about Mario Ferrari. He is not lazy getting to the puck. Um, and he works so hard behind the net, too. He's always crisscrossing guys up. He'll go one direction, they'll go to get him, and he'll stop and turn back. Mm -hmm. um, he does such a great job behind the net of protecting the puck. I think, honestly, even in the offensive zone, he's still got uh, some to offer. Um, and he, obviously, he's young. He's going to grow into that as well. But even right now, he just seems like such a good two-way defender. He's good in his zone. He's good 200 feet the other way. So, uh, And, of course, leadership qualities they've talked about this as well and they showed it the other day he had the a on his jersey mm -hmm. so uh for me mario ferraro um i can't say enough about the guy he's very not even gradually very quickly become my favorite player on the team he's uh, he's phenomenal so he's becoming a big fan favorite that was one of the questions that uh i think you guys were both at the preseason game you and jason mm -hmm. and you posted the question like who are you looking forward to playing and most of the answers were mario ferraro yeah um i could see him future captain at least alternate captain, uh, future C on his chest, and I think he's becoming the fan favorite over Hurdle. Hurdle, and I think when Hurdle's gone, he will be the fan favorite. Absolutely, no. You take Hurdle out of the equation, it's it's one hundred percent Ferraro. Mm -hmm. At least for me, I'm sure for a lot of you. In fact, we'll give that another opportunity for the comment <laughs> section down there. Uh, has Ferraro taken over your favorite player uh, over Hurdle? And if Hurdle's no longer on the team, is there anybody else that even comes close uh, tomorrow, Ferraro? I'll leave that to you. So there you go. Uh, defense, are we done with defense? No, we're not. We have Shimik and Vlasic. Uh, Kanijov is going to be, or I'm probably saying the name wrong, but he's going to be with Carlson probably mm -hmm. again. That leaves the bottom pairing as Shimik and Vlasic. Are you confident in that pair? I like the fact that you've got Vlasic with another defensive-minded guy like Shimik. Um, it worked well with Braun years ago. Um, they tried pairing him with Carlson for a while. Mm -hmm. Didn't really work out that well. I think getting back to... Uh, an all-defensive crew for Vlasic is going to kind of help get him back to what he's good at. Yeah, the only problem is you have two left-handed shots. Sure. That's that's the only problem, I would say. I don't, I'm saying it's a big one, but um, someone's going to be on their off hand. I think it's Vlasic, right? I think they put him on the right. Um, Probably, yeah. But I, I think it's fine. I think as a third pairing defenseman, I think that's pretty great. The only problem is that's $9 million on your third pairing. <laughs> So yes. I, maybe closer to 10, actually, but um, that's a lot. And that's this is where the Sharks have a problem. Now, Doug Wilson loves defensemen. Why does he love defensemen? Because he was one. He was one. He was a Norris it's Trophy phenomenal one. winning defenseman. Yeah. And he now has two Norris Trophy winners <laughs> and a finalist yeah. on the team. That's, where, that's what he went for. And it, it hasn't worked out, and now we're kind of stuck with him. So... But I didn't say, are you happy with the price tags, Aaron? I said, are you confident with the players? I'm Come confident on. with the players. You take away the price tag, I'm very confident in them. Really? The okay. Pairing. Yeah. I, I, think it's, I think it's pretty good. Yeah. I, I, honestly, I think he gets a lot more flack than he deserves. Mark Edward Vlasic. I think he does. Um, I think I, he had Martin Jones burnout, honestly. Oh, okay. I think he got frustrated because there's a lot of saves that he wasn't making. That, you know what? I like that. That's a very interesting point you just made right there. And that's uh, not something we talked about before. So Aaron's brain is working right I now. I think we're going to see a whole new team. There was an interview he did last week, I believe, yeah. in French, right? Uh, oh, I didn't hear about that one, no. Yeah, he was, he was uh, someone had translated it. I think it might have been Shang who translated it for us. Um, but he, they asked him about not making the playoffs and how frustrating it was. And he said that the Sharks are going to be a playoff team and they're going to make it this year. So the team is on board for making the playoffs. And I think uh, they asked him about Kane, too, if he would be welcome back in the yes. locker room or whatnot. Yes. And he said, absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, I mean, it was a short interview. It wasn't too long, but I thought it was pretty good. Last guy I want to talk about on defense, Ryan Merkley. Um, there's your right-handed defenseman that we're missing on that last pairing. I don't see him as a bottom pair defenseman. He's too weak defensively right now. Mm -hmm. I see him still playing in the AHL with the Barracuda. However, He's not been cut quite yet, but they did this last year. Yeah. Do you not remember? <laughs> exactly. They did this last year because they wanted him to shadow Brent Burns as long as possible before sending him back down. Right. So that's probably the exact same thing they're going to do. I fully expect him to go back down, not because of his play, really. I mean, probably a little bit, but opportunity. Opportunity. He's going to have, I'd rather him get 25 minutes of ice time at the AHL level, mm -hmm. playing in all situations, power play, shorthanded, be the absolute man there, be leader on that team, get the experience of playing against men, because he's still only 20 years old, and <laughs> uh, bring that into next season or this season. If they happen to make a trade, like, what if they trade Vlasic away? Yeah. And now they need a third-pairing defenseman, and he's been playing all these minutes for the Barracuda. 
Now he can come on and play the third line, third pairing minutes, but also be on the power play. Yeah. Or at least the second power play. Sorry, I'm just laughing because how long have we known about this guy? And he's only 20. We've been talking about him for like three years. Well, he got he's only 20 years old. Yeah, yeah, when he was drafted, he was still 17. <laughs> defense boy. Just, yeah, defense boy. Yeah. He wasn't a defense man yet. Yeah. So he turned 18, I think, uh, a couple couple months yeah. into the season. Yeah. I forget when his birthday is, but it's, it's late. So he's still very young, uh, still probably growing into his body. He's probably putting on some more muscle. Mm-hmm. And um, he's taking care of like they. Doug Wilson Jr. is a big proponent of uh, body fat and how yes. in shape you are. And he was not happy with him last year. And he said this year he's very happy. He seems to grasp the... I mean, what did you do at 19, 20 years old? Like, like yeah. it's awful. Yeah, lots of jack in the yeah. box. <laughs> yeah, totally. So uh, I didn't know much about nutrition and didn't care. Yeah. So yeah, it, it you change when you get older. So I think... Uh, and being around people who know what they're doing and they can show you the yeah. way. So... Um, yeah, healthy eating habits for me was taking the mayo off of the sourdough jack. That's that's what that was. So, uh, Ryan Merkley, obviously, much higher ceiling than I have uh, in that regard. So, um, okay, moving on from defense. Okay, how about the 4C? That was another contested uh, area that, uh, you know, Sharks fans were saying and Doug Wilson was saying. Obviously, we talked about the 3C. That short up with Nick Bonino. Yep. I'm very confident in the third line now. Uh, the fourth line, however, there's a little bit of competition, looks like, for that center position. Dylan Gambrell mainly versus Jasper Weatherby. Um, I'm not sure if you've heard much about Weatherby. Bob Bugner really liked Weatherby's play. He said he was physical. He was good in the corners. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of that stuff that, that uh, you know, the coach likes about him. So um, we know what we get with Gambrell. Um, maybe we haven't seen enough from Weatherby just yet, but between the two, is there one that you're kind of more hopeful with? Um, I mean... Gambrell, I can see, is a fourth-line center in the league. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's much better than that. Maybe third line at the most, like later in his career. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, we know what we get with Gambrell. Weatherby kind of brings a little bit more energy, I think. And uh, he has more drive. And this is exactly what they want is a competition going. So they want people to compete. They want them to try hard and, and beat the other person out. Um, Because it's a healthy competition. So this is exactly what this is turning into. And just like how Doug Wilson loves defensemen, Bob Bugner was a bruiser defenseman. (laughs) I think he had 1,200 penalty minutes and only about six goals in his career. Um, But he loves bruisers and he loves having a good fourth line. It's funny when you see coaches or GMs, how they were a player is exactly what they want when they say, like to them, especially if they want a Stanley Cup. Well, we, the, we won the Stanley Cup because yeah. the fourth line was so good and it dominated the other team because they were on the fourth line. So you could see like a, a trend there, a kind of a bias of what they want to mold the team into. I think that's what Bugner is trying to do is kind of bring that old school mentality. Yeah. Not, you know, not having bruisers and, and fighters on the team, but just um, guys are going to work their tails off. That's, that's exactly what he wants. And I think that's exactly what the Sharks need yeah. especially when they don't have that many skilled positions or skilled players to fill those positions they're going to have to turn to the hard working type right and, and those hard working types on the wing at least that uh, potentially on that fourth line mm-hmm. uh, vl and who is the other raska right yeah uh they were looking at those two guys to be kind of the bruisers potentially on that line but uh, as it sits right now at least between uh gambrell and weatherby i agree with you i think gambrell is more of a 3c kind of that ceiling mm-hmm. i don't even like him so much at 4c <laughs> Um, he's not the type of player that I would like to see in that role, right? So um, between the two, I think Weatherby kind of has a, a little bit of an edge, uh, obviously not with experience, but I, I think we're going to see Gambrell maybe starting off uh, on the on the scratched list, if you will. And yeah. if something happens with Benino, I think you're going to see Gambrell uh, jump into that 3C spot and leave Weatherby there at 4. I was going to say, that could be another rotating kind of, yeah. like those guys are kind of going back and forth. Speaking it of... could also be like a matchup type thing too, yeah. based on size and, and whatnot and who they're playing against. Could be. Yeah, and, and speaking of rotating, that was one of the things that Bob Bugner did not like about mm-hmm. the fourth line last season and one of the things that they're trying to shore up this season. Uh, on that fourth line, we talked about that rotating door, that revolving door, right? Guys were coming in. When some guy wasn't working out, they'd throw another one in there, right? Um, they didn't have an identity. That's what Bob Booner said. They needed an identity. So um, he says he's looking forward to having a little bit more of a, a, a solid line, less uh, change, right? Mm-hmm. He doesn't want the, all the permutations of players that he had all last season on that fourth line. He wants something a little bit more steady. So I think that we're going to get that this season. So if we take a look, our, our, the only 
the question mark really is Evander Kane. The the top six is looking okay right now, right? If you get Barabanov <laughs> or Balsers to actually step and play well, if you get uh, what's his name? LeBanc. I forgot his name. LeBanc and Meyer. If you get them yeah. stepping up, playing well, you know Cooch is going to give you everything he has. You know what Hurdle's capable of. So the top six is actually looking potentially promising, looking okay. They're if the okay. third line's doing all right with Benino centering them, and if the fourth line is starting to have an identity, then you're at least getting what you're trying to get out of the offensive core. And we just talked about the defense, and we talked about the whole revamp on the goaltending. I mm-hmm. think this team is at least pointed more in the right direction this season uh, than they were last. They're going to be a good team. They're just not going to be a great team. Right. And I think great teams have more depth, and that's where the Sharks are severely lacking. If you if one of these guys, if Hurdle gets injured... Done. done. The season's done. Yeah. Like they just they can't sustain any more of their top five offensive players going down. It's not going to work. So it, there's a lot going on, and this is going to go into: Is this team a playoff team? The reason it's, I say no, it's almost like you have a whiteboard and you know exactly uh, yeah. where we're going. The reason I say <laughs> no is because there's too many things that need to line up for it to yeah. happen. It's, I'm not saying it won't happen for sure, but in order for things to happen, no injuries, which is almost impossible. Uh, they need a lot to go right, as in Timo stepping up, Kevin LeBanc stepping, stepping up, one of the new guys, Dolan or Barabanov or Balsers stepping up, um, the goalies having an outstanding season, the defensemen playing better. There's just there's so many things that need to go right that if you don't hit on all of those, yeah. it's not going to work. That's where it's like, oh, man, this is going to be – I don't think it's going to be a long season. I don't think they're going to be top five draft pick season. But I think they'll be close to pushing for playoffs only because the division is so weak. Right. That's it. And I think that's, for me, the reason why I'm a little more optimistic about it. And I think they're fringe, right? I think they're fringe. I think they're going to be closer uh, to making playoffs. I think they might actually even squeak in again because the top two teams being, what, Vegas and Edmonton. Beyond that, I'm not really impressed with anybody else either. So um, if, like you said, if we hit on a lot of those marks, then I, I do see the team being better now. A big part, and I think a lot of you guys will agree with this sentiment, even though I was kind of, all last season, I was saying, you know, it's it's not just the goaltending. It's not just the goaltending, right? I acknowledge that Martin Jones was not the best goaltender on the planet. At the same time, he wasn't getting a whole lot of help from his defense. The difference here is that Aiden Hill has a really good high danger save percentage. This is a goalie who can handle the things that Martin Jones couldn't handle. Mm-hmm. So even if the defense falls apart the same way that I think that it did last season, I think Aiden Hill is going to be able to make some more of those saves that Martin Jones simply could not. Through no fault of his other than the fact that he's just not as good. Right? You give him the outside shots, he usually saves them. You give him the wide open ones, he usually saves them. If you get in tight, you go cross crease with him, you get a tip, you get in his eyes, he's not going to make that save. And you have to understand that. And if you do understand that, play to that strength or that weakness. Bolster up your defense and keep everybody out of his way. With Aiden Hill, even if they're not able to get everybody out of his way, I'm more confident, given his high danger save percentage from last season, that he's going to be able to close that door uh, better than Martin Jones Mm -hmm. was able to. So just that alone, just the goaltending alone, I feel like we're in a better spot to be closer and closer. Now you start saying, okay, can Timo, can Kevin LeBanc, can Cooch, will Hurdle stay healthy? All these guys, on and on, are they going to play to their potential? If they can even just play just a little bit better than they did the last season, and I'm talking about the young guys just progressing, if they can just take the next step, which is everybody who's a young guy should be taking that next step, if they can do that, I honestly do believe that we're going to be right there looking for a playoff spot. I know I said the same thing last season, but I I see it again this season. I feel like we're right there. And you know what, Eric Carlson? He's got a new haircut, so he's ready to go. I don't know so if he does burns. <laughs> yeah, he does. He, he buzzed his the head. top yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, new haircuts. It's it's two new men on the blue line. I'm telling you, they're gonna they're gonna play well this season. It's uh, you're gonna see it. I think they're gonna make it. I think they're gonna squeak in. I know they'll probably get bounced in the first round, but that's that's kind of what. All right, tell about. us in the comments. Do you think they're a playoff team? Yes or no? <laughs> you can't say are they a playoff team. Will they will they squeak into the playoffs? Okay, which would mean they are a playoff team. No. Yes or no? It's different. <laughs> Whatever. It's the same different. thing. Put that in the comments too. Is that different? <laughs> There's still gonna be so many comments. 
Uh, okay, so we're done with uh, all of that talk. What was the next sure. thing we wanted to, to hit on here? Uh, fantasy hockey. Yeah. We, uh, I'm doing one league this year, not two, and there are four openings left, and our draft is next, this upcoming Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember. I don't know. It's next week. So uh, if you would like to join, let me know and send us an email to thefinfactor at gmail.com and uh, I will send you an invite. And Trevor, please check your email. <laughs> I'm guessing Trevor is last time's winner. He's last year's winner and yeah. he keeps emailing us saying, can I play? And I've sent him the invitation like six times. And I even write back in his email, yes. And then yeah. he doesn't respond, then he sends another email. Am I still in? Yes! If you're listening, yes, you are in. We need four more teams. Sign up. So there you go. Okay, cool. So uh, that's basically going to do it here, but we do want to leave you with uh, maybe maybe with some awkward sounds, maybe with some music, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but we're going to have uh, just some shots of this set. Um, this is, again, uh, Aaron's neighbor's uh, garage, and it's just phenomenal. I thought it was amazing when I walked in, and I wanted you guys to see uh, the amount of work that uh, went into this. It's just... it's beautiful that yeah. is what it is uh so we're gonna go ahead and leave you with uh, some shots of the set so uh, on that note uh for super producer jason i'm paul and i'm aaron and we will see you guys next week next week bye bye, -bye. thanks for tuning in if you like this episode check out our other content especially interviews you can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.